Hello, and welcome back to MLB The Show 18 and the Jason Parham Road to the Show. I'm Tyrant Saber. Last time out, Jason pitched for seven and a third innings against the Yankees, allowed eight hits, but only one run. But alas, because uh, Lou Thompson of the Yankees allowed only four hits all game and pitching like eight and two thirds innings, uh, Boston lost that one three to nothing. So can't help it. Jason gave them every opportunity he could, they could to win, and they just did not take advantage of it. So Boston is two games back of Tampa, of all people, in the American League East right now, but we're only 16 games into the season, so it's a little early to be panicking about anything. Let's just uh, pick ourselves back up, brush ourselves back off, and let's carry on. Okay, bullpen day. What do we got? What do we got? Two-seam velocity. Old favorite. 12 six control. Probably necessary at some point. Cut break would be, would be nice. Home runs per nine cap. Don't care about it even a little bit. Velocity cap. Again, not really interested. Durability and home runs per nine. Eh. Reaction, eh. Well, maybe I will raise Jason's reaction because we've been having some trouble getting uh, getting some of these plays out there. Oh, Jay. Boy, you need some new clothes. I don't care if it is team official garb. You just can't be seen wearing that. All right, so Jason is going to take the field at home against the Detroit Tigers. Now, this is going to be the first time that Jason will have played against the Tigers, so I have no basis for comparison. We do have uh, former Red Sox Brock Holt on second base for them. Know that much. Phillies, uh, Philly, uh, Phillies uh, alum Aaron Altair out in left field. Tomas Talese, I remember him from the Marlins. couple old faces. But uh, overall, it's a team we haven't played very much, so let's just go out there and get it. Into its second century, but still one of the best around. Fenway Park here in Boston. Tonight, it's the first of four between the Detroit Tigers and the Boston Red Sox. It's going to be a premier pitching matchup. Two of the league's hardest throwers go head-to-head -head next. Jason Parham will be on the mound for the series opener. What do you have for us on him, Danny? Well, this guy certainly could be one of those horses for horses kind of guy. Loves pitching at home. Take a look at those home road splits. They're pretty good. Without question, he's more comfortable pitching at home than he is on the road. Cesar Puello next. And we are set for baseball here this evening. Okay, first pitch of the game. Let's see what you can do. Mr. Cesar Puello, let's get it. First delivery to him on the way. And Excuse the first me, it's probably Cesar Puello. Is taken but... for a cold strike one. Guys, this Red Sox ball club entering play here tonight. They come in in the midst of a stretch where they've dropped six of their last nine. Yeah, Matty, dropping their last game. Now they find themselves at 500 again. They got to find a way to get on a hot streak. You cannot continue to go peaks and valleys throughout the course of this season and ride that 500 line all year at some point you're going to have to take seven out of ten eight out of ten to get this going in the right direction well some of this failure can be attributed to our four and five hole pitching i think because last i checked they were running like 5.0 eras but Fastball is swung on and missed. Poor, poor and teammate that blames his the teammates contest. for the failures so of the team. Now to take so a look let's at the starting lineup for the visiting Detroit Tigers. Dan Fleasak, who are you focused on? Well, I love watching Manny Machado do his thing. He's on a nice stretch. That's three home runs in his last ten games. He's swinging the bat really well right now, and by watching his mannerisms in the box, he just looks comfortable in the plate. He's in some kind of a groove. Here's Brock Holt now. It's been a really slow start to the season for him, as you can see by the April numbers on your screen. Okay, Brock Holt, former Red Sox. See what you can do. Here comes the first pitch. Popped him up. Pop up. 
out there to Simeon. Marcus Simeon at shortstop, and that's another out. out. One pitch, one out. Here's Manny Machado now. He was one for four back in Wednesday's contest. Manny Machado. Manny Machado at the time of this recording, of course, in the middle of a heated free agency battle between several teams vying for his services. Inarguably one of the best shortstops of our generation, but, you know, also a little notorious for his low effort plays uh, when running the bases. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Find the ball. Find the ball. That ball's but, two out, nobody you know, out. if you hit a home run, you don't have to run around the bases. Into right field. That's a base hit. And, uh, Boy, there's another opposite base hit right there, Dero. It's He's turning a... April showers into May Fowlers right now. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. This guy has gotten off to a hot start, but it's his ability to use the whole field. That's what's made the difference. He's not just pull happy or trying to push everything the other way. He's taking with the pitch. Mm, Nick Castellanos. Nick Castellanos now. He's ready for his first at bat of his early season Tapping curveball out of the zone. And he was early on it, so I think I'm going to go slider now. Nothing in one count. Here it comes. Looks at a slider Catch over the, the zone with it, just as planned. Two. Time for a look at our umpires in this one. Behind the plate is James Kingsley. Hey, Dero, James Kingsley's a pretty good umpire. He doesn't get too excited, keeps things under emotions. He's a pretty good ball and strike umpire. Yeah, James oh, Kingsley will never show you up, and he's always approachable. Two out, two. The 0 2 delivery. Slider Swing and a miss. For strike three, a great Get pitch off to put my in plate, in sir. One left for Detroit. Tigers nothing. Sox coming to the plate. It's All right, see what the Red Sox can make of it show. this time around. Hopefully, they get more than four hits and zero runs this time. I'm not bitter. You're bitter. Now at the plate, Ray Stacy. It was a two for four effort for him in Wednesday's game. Ray Stacy. You guys got a beard to be proud of, man. Man after my own heart. But Red Sox get no runs across in the first inning, so it is still nothing, nothing. Top of the second. Let's go, Jay. First pitch on its way. A ball and no strikes. Well, fans of good pitching are in for a treat today. What can we expect from today's matchup, guys? I know everyone loves the long ball, Matty, but this is why I pay the price of a ticket right here. Two of the game's best, two of the hardest throwers competing at the top of their game. Dan, you have to love this stuff. You know, Dero, we thought coming into this one it was going to be a low-scoring affair. Both of these pitchers look like they're locked in early, and runs are going to be really difficult to come by. They both look like they're on point so far. Okay, Jay. Slider is what he's calling for. Let's give it to him. The one-one. Waves in for strike number two. He had some really good late action on that slider right there. It's hard to do anything with that pitch unless you're sitting on it and catch it out front before it breaks all the way in. And that was early, so I think I'm going to go change up on him. I'm going to use a little showtime, make sure it's right in that corner. See if he can make anything of it. No, he cannot. Missed. He got him on strikes. Have a seat and get All right, comfortable. Let's take a quick look at how the Red Sox set up on D today. And let's take a look at the guy playing shortstop up the shoot today, and that's Marcus Simeon. This has been a work in progress. He's had to grind, take countless hours of ground balls and work on his accuracy. But don't get it twisted. He's made some big highlight reel plays, and if you miss middle, we all know the power he has. And here's the big left-handed bat of A.J. Reed. Three hits for him in that ball game on Wednesday. Another change up, same spot. Okay. Whatever you say, man. First offering on its way. Swing and a miss out in front of a changeup. Great job by the pitcher right there to pull the string. He knew he had an aggressive hitter at the plate, somebody who was sitting on fastball and ready to do damage. 
and he was able to slow him down right there and get him off balance. Hit back up the middle. Yeah, tap her on over to Marcus Simeon. Simeon. On to first and that's and out down. number two. Keep it rolling, guys. So striding forward now, Brian Goodwin. He's ready for his first at bat of this early season contest. Gonna go inside cutter as opposed to the outside two seamer. First pitch of the I know I've said it many times before, but the distinction here is the cut fastball goes to the glove side of the pitcher. So for Jason being a right hander, it'll cut from right to left. The two seamer is thrown with action that makes it cut arm side, so it'll cut from left to right relative to Jason. The advantage of it is that you know, there's a theory of, of baseball science called tunneling, being that if you throw, have a re similar no release point for your pitches, then the amount of reaction time that the, the batter has to decide whether to swing is shorter than it appears. And the later and sharper your pitches break, the less time they actually have to decide whether or not they want to swing at whatever pitch you're throwing them. And the, the two cutter and the two the seam have two similar pitch. arm actions, so okay, they, they, but the they break ball. in opposite directions. So you'll wind up having a pitch that looks the same coming out of your hand, but then it'll go either to the left or to the right of where you're originally throwing it. The one two. Try that curveball. Swing and a miss. And missed. He got him on strikes. Down in order go the Tigers. We'll go to the bottom of the second, no score. Digging in now, Aaron Altair was an 0 for 4 effort for him in Wednesday's ball game. Go ahead and throw that uh, change up for him. Here we go, kid. Here we go. Now here's the pitch. Very weakly on the ground. That's a foul ball. Altair, a native of Germany. He's currently on a one-year deal, so he stands to be a free agent at the end of this season. You know, Matty, I know he's in the final year of his contract, but he's playing to expectations, to be honest with you. I know he, need, he wants to turn it up a little bit, though, as he approaches the end of the season and make that salary push as he heads towards free agency again. Into the windup, here comes the 0-1. Just missed with a breaking ball. Looked like he was trying to work in a front door curveball there, but it seemed like it popped out of his hand a little early, causing it to miss inside. Let's go, kid. One time right here. I appear to have lost Aaron Altair in my sheet here, so I was hoping to give you some interesting statistics about his matchups with Jason. Outside, so two and one. Give me a moment, if you will. Actually. You won't have to wait a bit. I'll just have to do it in between these pitches. Hey, like the up there, huh? Sent on the ground out to second. Gloved by LeMayhew. Throw to first in time, and the leadoff man is gone. To start and Aaron third. Altair is gone. Good pitch right there to run the two-seamer in on his hands and bunch him up. And an easy ground ball as the result. Standing in now, Tomas Talese. As he'll take a look at a high strike that time, it's nothing in one. And he's looking to get it going, off to a bit of a slow start this year. Plays it first. Up there, huh? the no, believe it or not, Aaron Altair doesn't appear to have ever Fastball batted against Jason two. in his career, so hey, I got nothing to tell you. Tomas Talese, on the other hand, he finds himself down 0-2 now. He doesn't know if he's coming back in there. I do remember him. I know he way. played for the Marlins, and I know that he has batted against Jason before. He has a career 400 OPS, 200 average, 
200 OBP because he's got one base hit in five at-bats. So, not fantastic. Rip down the first base line. But a foul well, ball. He was early on that curve ball, so that let's a terrible give him another uh, off-speed. Excuse me. Let's give him another off-speed here. Give him a change up outside. Swing and a miss. As he's down on strikes, so it's two up, two down to begin the third. Well, there's the great equalizer, the change of El Cambio. Listen, if you can keep that pitch in your back pocket and pull it out when you need it, like he did right there, usually hitters they don't stand a chance. Now batting, designated hitter, Cesar. Cesar Puello next. Cesar Puello didn't get to see any breaking balls low. from Jason Hold last time around, so we'll see how he does with those. Two outs here. The 1 0 home is nope. a fastball that misses. Hmm. I wonder. Sometimes ump. it can be difficult for a pitcher. You're facing a guy that's not known to be a big stick in the lineup. Sometimes the toughest thing is to be I don't feel comfortable throw about strikes. throwing a slider middle of the zone. If it's all the same to you, Blake. Come on, baby, get your pitch up there. Down low, and the plot thickens here. Okay, three and, three and O on the Tigers' leadoff hitter. Hey, let's go, big fella. Hey. Takes a knee high. And he takes fastball. a fastball. I can Third throw strikes. No I can put him in the middle of the zone if I want to. I really don't want to. Really, really do not. So let's go ahead. Here we go now. Come on now. Oh, a conservative cutter high corner. Finds the zone to fill the count three and two. two and now I think we'll go, go inside. Slider. Be a little cheeky about it. There's ball four. And the ump screws me. Looked like he might have gotten squeezed a little bit right there, and you know he's talking to himself in his head about it. That kind of stuff goes both ways, though. Hitters get their fair share of crummy calls going against them, too. Yeah, I'm a grown-ass man. I will deal with this with grace and composure, and I certainly won't go into tilt mode and throw a meatball for this guy to punish here's Brock Holt now as he'll pop this one foul off to the left and out of play Over that wasn't a meatball it was down in the zone ground ball sent back all right well Marcus Simeon Throw in the dirt, but a good scoop at first saves an error as this side Gets is retired. The out. Tigers lead one. Home half of the third Kinda coming weird. up. I no thought he score. stepped on second, but he got the out, so by definition, good play. Digging in for his second at bat, Manny Machado, a base hit in his first trip. And Boston still scoreless after three, so. What's going on here? One time. here you go. First offering on its way. Hit fairly well out towards straight Club, away center. Jackie Bradley, Bradley Jr. on the run. run. But he's got make plenty of time to get away. there and make the out. One pitch, one out. Bye, Manny. See you later. Next will be the cleanup hitter, Nicholas Castellanos. He looked to bounce back after striking out his last time up. First pitch coming, here it is. It's a high fly ball. Ooh, and he yoked it. Field corner. If it stays fair, it's but gone. it goes foul, and that thankfully. Broke our tie, but instead it's a foul Grooved ball. that one, and he did not miss, but he was just a little early on it. Here we go. The wind up and the 0 1. 
Missed with a slider. Well, if you love pitching and defense, this has been a game for you. Are you happy with that, Dan? I think this continues for a while, Matt. Both of these pitchers are throwing very well, throwing strikes, having good command of their off-speed pitches. This is going to be one of those low Swing scoring and a miss. One and two. Come on, big guy. But he was early on it again, so let's go inside corner. Change up. And Swing and a and miss. He's down on strikes, and the first two are retired here to begin inning number four. Get that swing off tells my me he plate. was really trying to get a pitch out front and rip it down the line, but that wasn't a great pitch to do it on. It's really not the best two strike approach either. Low cutter? It's kind of a weird call, but. Ray Stacy. Into the box, Ray Stacy popped him up. Club to Marcus Simeon, Simeon plenty of time to scramble over. And that ends and the inning. The out. Nothing across here this half. To the bottom of inning number four we go. And we are tied, nothing, nothing. Hey, all right, here we go now. So striding in, A.J. Reed. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Still nothing after five. I'm getting goosebumps. I'm getting flashbacks. Here's the first pitch to him. That's a ball. And a fastball just below the knees, ball one. So earlier in the broadcast, we mentioned that we might be seeing a pitcher's duel today, and these two guys have certainly delivered on that promise. You know, Matt, sometimes it's really hard to put a finger on why a guy pitches well. J.D. Martinez well back to pull it in. Time. Not a problem. So far, he hasn't had a very good season. But you know this. When you have the stuff that this Excuse guy me, has. Excuse me, that's not J.D. Martinez. Out, Who is that? One inning, one pitch away. That is. Turning things back around. And he says it's J.D. Martinez. Now, I like wonder, though. Who do we got out there? Randall Aren't Romero is subbing for J.D. Martinez at the moment. And he'll step off. Okay, so he was early on that pitch. So I think. Or no, that was that was the last batter. Next batter to the plate, Brian Goodwin. As he takes a called strike. Okay, slider in there. He's 0 for 1 thus far. about a low fastball two seam into the windup here comes the 0 and 1 and that one stayed too low apparently cutter high perhaps the 1 1 home high in the air down the right field line but this is just going to wind up being a foul ball. Long, loud foul ball. Hey, he was early on it, too. Right. So how about we go cheeky little outside slider. Come after it if you dare. Grounded. Oh, he dared. Fielded by Abreu. But and Jose Abreu is there to pull it in. Unassisted. And that's two outs. So stepping in, Aaron Altair. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Line drive to left. And Andrew Benintendi out there in left field just yanks it in. And that's three the inning. Three down for Detroit. Halfway home, still no score. And they're holding us to one hit. Say what you say what you will about Digging this Detroit the Tigers again. team. They are Comes holding us real short. One in the ball game. First offering on its way. Thought he had the inside corner that time, but it missed for ball one. Hey, you got it. No one better. Let's go, kid. 
the 1-0. -oh. It's laid off, but there's there for strike, strike one. where I want it. Okay, what say you? What say you, Aaron Altair? Are you your Tomas Tolis? I'm losing track already. Down low, two balls and a strike. Come on, Jay. You got this. No need to panic. Now the 2 1. Swing and a hard hit ball down the line in right. And that is and now get over a ground rule double because it bounced fair before it went out. When you play in this park where the fences are shorter, this is going to happen more often than any other ballpark. Now back to the top of the lineup, stepping in, Cesar Puello. And he'll hit with a chance to push across the game's first run. Yeah, great RBI okay, opportunity so. here. But at the very least, he needs to find a way to advance that runner to third. Small things like that in a tight game can make a big difference. No outs, runner on second. So this is not a good place for Jason to be. First pitch coming, here it is. Line to the right side. And, and that's, that's just going to be a bloop hit. single, but they are going to hold the and runner at the third, third. So runners at the corners with nobody out. Hey, this has the makings of being a pretty big inning D roll. This could be big for the Tigers. All of a sudden, man, man on first and third, third with yeah, no outs, the best opportunity they've had all night. Right here, he's going to have to start executing pitches. He cannot leave a ball over the heart of the plate right here. He's going to have damage on his hands. And a called strike down in the zone. Nothing in one. 0 for 2 from him so far in this one. Come on, guy. Get your pitch up there. Off the plane. One, okay. one ball, one strike. I can walk one guy. I'd rather not, but I can do it if I have to. No offer on oh that. Dear. Two balls and a strike. Dear, 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 dear. Boy, he better get it back together here quick because he's got two guys on already. He's starting to lose location of that strike zone. He's got to throw a strike right here. Started to chase Oof. that time, but then he wisely holds off. Brock Holt holds three. up just in time. Okay. Okay. He was late on that, so I'm going to go ahead and throw fastball high outside corner. Rock Holt now with a full count. Okay. This is what the showtime's for, man. No runs, three hits, and no errors Break glass in, in case of emergency. Tigers. He was early on that one, so I think it's time for the slider now. Down and inside. Make it Softly Make it hit to the oh, left side. crap. And he, and he has sat on it, on three and, and that two. drives across a run. Up big, it's a base hit. Boy, some really good pitching going into the sixth inning in this one. Big RBI base hit to break through. What a pitcher's duel this been. Yeah, Dan, the pitching's been great, but something I've been focusing on is how great the defenses have been on both sides. To push a run across in the sixth inning, let's get the bullpens fired up. Here's Manny Machado now. And now it's Manny Machado coming up. Two men on, no outs. Jason has thrown pretty well this season, but it's been a while since he's had a full fledged blur burnout, and this looks like it's going to be the one. They're going to extend their lead as the runner scores from second. Okay, and Manny Machado scores an RBI. Cesar Puello. First pitch comes in, whack, base hit. Yeah, you want to know if this guy was ready to go? He had a game. And plan. hashtag ambush. Here we go now. They are gonna, they are gonna leave Jason in here. So this is Nick Castellanos now. This will lay off a slider too low, ball one. Oh for two for him to this point. And we'll see what Jason can do here, because it's at this point, the wind seems to have slipped away entirely, and now we're looking at not even getting a quality start, which is probably going to be the first time Jason has done that in a while. Just missing oh, here. blue! 
We've seen him killing me on strikes more than once in this game. So this has been a better approach by him at this at bat much more patient and he's gotten himself into a good hitters count. All right, let's let's pull it together here. Just need a grounder. I need a grounder, Jay. I don't need any more balls. And a good there we go. There it's three and one. Three and one with two on, and this is where you, you got to be geared up for. All right, curve ball inside corner. Give me a grounder at somebody. Pitch. On the ground to the left side. All right, the so that's a tag. On to first, and they get a that's ball. kind of an unusual double play, but I'll take it. it. Leaves a man on second, but now I got two outs. Stepping up to the plate, Ray Stacy, runner in scoring okay. position with Sugan. Stacy. So. See what we can do with you now. Here's the first pitch to him. And a fastball just a bit high. Machado stands at second with two gone. That's a and miss. And that missed one and one. Hey, that's, that's a huge something. double play to settle everybody down right now. Giving up a few Man, this has been a real Jekyll and Hyde game. It's looking so good to start, and then things just kind of fell apart here in the sixth. Swing and a miss on the cutter. That's what I want to see. Slider inside. Okay. The one two. And that's a bouncer over to DJ LeMayhew, and that'll get him out of the inning. So quality start still intact, but you got to imagine Jason's day is about done because it turned into kind of a stinker here in the sixth. It's the Tigers two and the Red Sox nothing. Now at the plate, AJ nope, Reed. they're going to leave and Jason guys, in for the seventh. seventh inning already. Hey, I'm not complaining, but this one's been flying by. Yeah, I'll agree with that, Ned. That's what you get when both starting okay. pitchers have it. Okay, you say so, man. Neither of them have been nibbling around the strike zone at all, and they've trusted their defense to make the plays, and they've done just that. I can't that. say that yeah, I feel Jason has earned the really manager's way, trust to stay out there any longer, but... Into the wind I guess they want him the to turn the lineup line. over one more time. Swing and a miss at the good old Uncle Charlie. This guy's pitching really well in this one so far. You could just see he's awful confident attacking the strike zone, and when he comes off the mound at the end of the inning, looks hey, like he nice stepped in a big old bucket of sassy. Well, not even Jason's hair care and product of choice off. is going to get him out of this one. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back. And take some better pitching two. is what it's going to take. That's back-to-back -back breaking balls away, but now he's got himself into a little bit of a tough spot. You probably can't throw that again, so your opponent is probably up there just looking for a fastball. Oh, and, and this one run. is thankfully staying Romero. in the park, but that one could have. Wind been going the other way. That one would have been out of here. But that's six and a third now. Stepping in, Brian Goodwin. Third trip to the plate for him here. He struck out and grounded out in his first two tries. First pitch of the at bat on its way. A change There's up a that just catches the Come bottom on, of the zone for a strike. Keep this year rolling. against right handed pitching, Goodwin is a batting line residing in the 230s. Matty, he struggled against right-handed pitching all season long, but he just needs a few knocks today. There's maybe one. to get the confidence kind of going. A cheeky strike I don't think there. this is a norm for this ball player. So let's go like high and inside now. That Pop that showtime because I don't think I'm going to be out here long enough to enjoy it. That misses. Oh, one Jay. And two. A great case of a manager sticking up for his pitcher right there and giving that umpire an earful. He didn't get that pitch called the way he wanted it to, but the manager is planting a seed in that umpire's mind to try to expand the strike zone so some of those borderline pitches start to go. And he yokes that way. slider, but thankfully he pulled it. Here we go now. Come on now. One time. 
So let's try a change up outside. And he'll stay alive Touch here. that one. Foul at the plate. It'll remain one and two. But you were still early on it. So, on. so what? So let's try curveball. Swing and a miss, so it's a finally. Two outs to start the seventh. He put up a pretty good battle at the plate right there. They finally get him on a one and two pitch, but you could see that he wasn't laying down without a fight. He really made the pitcher earn that strikeout. Okay, so Aaron Altair, 0 and 2 for now, but so we're gonna get you out. Into the box now, Aaron Altair. All right, turn. Hit high and deep out and to yoked it left. to the wall. Racing that one is gone. Light tower, and it's gone. And goodbye Jason home run here off start the warming up the Aaron showers because you are done Second for tonight I think early in the year and the Tigers take a three to nothing lead and now five games into the season is when Jason gives up his first home run it's a shame but we knew it was going to happen so just uh, pick ourselves well, up and try again to keep that sharp curve tomorrow I think and you could see that he just hung that one up there and he paid the price the good news is he worked late into the start. The bad news is fatigue might be finally showing. Here comes the Red Sox manager up out of the dugout on his way to the mound. And he's going to motion for his bullpen here. That'll do it for the starter tonight. Not an altogether bad performance here. Six and two thirds. But he stands to be the loser unless things can turn around. Robbie Scott will get the ball here as he looks to get the final out in the top of the seventh. Robbie Scott. Yeah, unfortunately, I got nothing nice to say about this one. It was looking okay, but the offense just has not been there tonight. And so Jason is on the hook for the loss, even though he only allowed three runs. So let's find out how this one turns out for the Bo Sox. Survey says... You know, it's always nice to get that first one under your belt when you start a four-game series on the road. It takes a little bit of... Well, sad to say, Jason kind of earned this loss for himself. He pitched for six and two-thirds innings and allowed Tonight's six hits for three runs, three including an Aaron Altair home run Detroit, off the light tower, but collected seven strikes. Mariano his ERA has gone to 1.45, his FIP is at 1.79, and his XFIP goes to 2.73. He is now 3-2 and two on the season and that makes him 31 and 28 on his career so that's going to do it for me until next time i'm tyrant saber and i will see you at the ballpark